When Torben Sondergaard and his family fled religious persecution in Denmark, they thought they would find refuge in the United States. They never expected the treatment they would receive from the U.S. government. Leaving Denmark with only their suitcases, Sondergaard and his family continued their ministry, the last reformation in the United States. Then last year, immigration and customs enforcement officials canceled Sondergaard's visa waiver without his knowledge and arrested him. First, authorities told him it was for charges of gun smuggling. Then it was changed to overstaying his visa. He was incarcerated in the federal wing of the Baker County Jail in McClenny, Florida, spending his first 10 days in solitary confinement. He told us he was forced to wear a red jumpsuit, which is used to identify high-risk and violent inmates, even though he has no criminal background. After 412 days in detention, more than a year, Sondergaard was deported back to Denmark, which he immediately left to reunite with his family in another undisclosed nation. Now in his first media interview since being deported, Torben tells CBN News how shocked he was to be imprisoned in America. Uh, shocked that it can happen. It happened. Um... I was not prepared for it. Um, I think the, the church is not prepared for it. I didn't understand how this could happen also in a, in a country like America, where there's so many Christians and churches and ministries. Sondergaard told us that inside the prison he faced a level of hostility from the ICE officers that was different from the treatment of other detainees. I had people come in to me and say, what is happening with you, Tom? Like, what, what is happening here? They don't treat anyone else like this, there was intimidation. I had some encounter with the eyes, officer, that was very unusual. And it was very frightening to be there. And uh, so in that way, yeah, it, my case was different. At a House subcommittee hearing in July, the chairman of the Border Security and Enforcement Subcommittee, Congressman Clay Higgins, accused the Biden administration of targeting and persecuting Sondergaard who is an, a legal immigrant from Denmark, came to our country legally, applied for asylum properly, had no criminal charges. He was arrested for overstay of his visa. He's been incarcerated in, in solitary confinement for over one year. He'd been persecuted by this administration and targeted, we believe, because he's an evangelical Christian minister. But Torben says in spite of the treatment he experienced, his time in prison transformed and humbled him, especially when Christian leaders he said he had been inwardly critical of spoke out on his behalf. And when they spoke out for me, it really humbled me in a deep way. And I, did they really speak out for me? And, and, and God used that to, to really humble me and my wife and, and, and to show like who's our enemies and who's not our enemies. We have the same enemy. We should not be enemy against each other. There is another enemy out there. Torben says he was one of the few detainees in the facility who did not speak Spanish, but that did not stop a revival from spreading through his unit. I had a person from my first cell who came to, to my cell, in my third dorm, came to my dorm and asked him, uh, hey, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. Yeah, actually, in our dorm, we are doing Bible study every day. There is a missionary someplace in this prison who have done some teaching, and it's being translated and going from dorm to dorm, and we are doing Bible study in our dorm, and it's so good. And he told me that, and I said, um, I'm that missionary. You are! And, and he was so excited to see me. So I, it, it, it really just grew. Many got healed, people got filled with the Holy Spirit. Many got set free in our cell. It was really powerful. And the most beautiful communion I've ever shared was on the prison floor with a new convert, a new disciple. And the most beautiful baptism was in there. And, and the word became alive in, in a very different way. But it was, it was really beautiful sometimes. However, Sondergaard believes his experience is also a warning to the church that persecution is coming. We, we, think, we think it's for the few extreme out there. And we think we are safe if we just don't do like them and them and them. 
and maybe it's only a few now, but it's a few now, and then in short time it will be the many, and, and in the future it will be everyone who confessed Jesus as Lord. Torben's asylum application is still pending, but for now he's finally been reunited with his wife and family. I'm very close to my wife and my daughters, and my wife went through a very hard, very, very hard time in all of this. It's good to be out, it's good to be free, uh, so I feel excited for the next season. Um, at the same time, I, I feel a little homeless. Uh, I, I don't know what now, what, what is going to happen now. I would say it was truly the best Bible school I ever been on. I don't want to do it again. I don't really don't want to do it again. But but I'm thankful for what God He did through all of it. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks for watching CBN News on YouTube. If you'd like to see more news from a Christian perspective, visit cbn.com/give to become a partner.